Um, good day, everyone. Um, today, I just want to share with you some key findings from uh, AgriFuture Project 010216. And this is based on our um, previous research on the importance of digestive dynamics. And um, in this particular particular project that we're hoping we can build up, um, get some preliminary information about digestion rates of different feed ingredients so that we can explore the possibilities of formulating based on digestion rates. So the, the first slide I just would like to um, bring you back to some of our research emphasizing the importance of digestive dynamics and the what is it what it is and why they are important. So the tables, um, this table is showing you the um, apparent digestibility coefficients of starch and the protein at the four different sites of small intestine in diets based on maize, sorghum and wheat. And this was published in 2014, if you're interested in more details. So the key information here, um, uh, there are two. So the first one is starch is digested much more rapidly than protein. For example, if we look at um, proximate adrenal level, um, the apparent digestibility of starch is already 0 0.83 um, for maize-based diet. But then um, for protein, which is apparent digestibility of protein, um, it's a negative value. This is normal because this is in influenced by um, endogenous nitrogen flow. But then by the end of this totodrino, we see lots of that um, has been reabsorbed and then the apparent protein digestibility um, is 0 0.7. But then the point here is starch digestion is much more rapidly than protein. And totodrino is the major site of absorption and the digestion. Um, so, if we calculate the digestible starch and the protein, 96% of digestible starch and 79% of digestible protein was already digested in the jejunal. So this, this calculation is based on the end of jejunal digestibility and also the dietary starch and the protein content. So this is very interesting because we think um, starch is digested more rapidly than protein. And we don't really consider jejunal um, digestibility in our diet formulation. Therefore, um, maybe there is a situation of imbalanced starch and protein digestion and absorption, uh, and the, which may influence the feed conversion efficiency. That was our original hypothesis. And during my PhD studies, and the, we um, conducted a series of five experiments and which confirmed that uh, hypothesis. And obviously for muscle protein deposition, we need both glucose and amino acids. Therefore, we think the balance or the synchrony between starch and protein, glucose and amino acids are very important for efficient muscle protein deposition. And um, this project, uh, the outline is quite straightforward. So we're hoping, we hope to, to um, quantifying digestion rates of starch and protein, and in some experiment, amino acids as well, uh, in zero grains and the protein meals commonly used in Australia. And then um, in the end, we formulate a complete diet by using these ingredients and um, uh, trying to find a relationship between the digestion rate in single ingredients and complete diets um, to see whether it is possible to, um, to formulate it based on digestion rates. And though I keep saying digestion rates, but what, what are they? So for us to quantify it, we collected the digester samples from four sites of small intestine. Um, often we feed, um, if it's a single ingredient diet, we feed um, broiler chicken, male broiler chickens from day 21 to day 28. It's just like a classical setting for digestibility measurement experiment. Um, and then at the end of the study, day 28, we collect the digester samples from four sites and to quantify the apparent digestibility. In the meantime, we also quantify the mean retention time in uh, each segment. And then we plot apparent digestibility against the, the, mean the corresponding mean retention time. 
and um, we fit exponential model um, to describe the digestion curve. And the K here, which describes the slope of the curve, and um, that is what we call the rate of digestion. So the higher the figure is, the constant is, and the, high, the, um, the more rapidly the digestion went. And also, the, uh, we also can uh, quantify the uh, predicted value of potential digestible nutrients as well. So the first two experiments in this project, uh, we quantified the starch digestion rates in different cereal grains. The very interesting thing is we actually did not see quite big significant differences uh, between um, grains from different sources, between the same grain type, but from different sources. For example, sorghum, that's the one we saw we would be able to see differences based on the research we did in the past. Um, but then uh, statistically, there is no difference in terms of starch digestion rate in different kinds of sorghum here, uh, even just the, between white sorghum and the different red sorghums. So um, statistically, there is no difference. And uh, the same with wheat, uh, we try to get to four different kinds of wheat and there's um, no significant differences. But collectively, wheat has um, higher starch digestion rates than, uh, than sorghum and corn in this study. And um, this is a very busy slide. And this is a study three to five. And in study three to five, we quantify the protein digestion rate. Um, and also in one experiment, we quantify the amino acid digestion rate as well. Um, to evaluate the protein meals commonly used in Australia. And here the interesting thing um, I just want to bring to you is if, uh, if we look at the blood meal too, so we had a little bit of problem run into um, get the animals to eat a sufficient amount of feed to quantify digester. So that's why there is no reading for blood meal in, start in the first protein meal evaluation. The diet we used is based, is, um, is based on the test ingredients and the dextrose. So that's just a classic way um, of measuring digestibility. But unfortunately, um, the amino, amino, imbalanced amino acid profile in blood meal um, did stop birds to eat enough. So, and also the interesting thing here is uh, a high, uh, high protein digestion rate does not mean a large extent of digestion. So blood milk too, which we, uh, quanti we, we could quantify digestibility and the, it actually has the most, um, the highest, the significantly highest protein digestion rate, but despite not being significant, almost, despite not being significant, um, the extent of digestion is not great. So if you're interested, I know these two slides are very, very busy. If you're interested in more information, and you can find more information in these two publications, which is already published online and is all open access, it includes information of, um, more information about the samples we collected, um, and also the nutrient composition evaluation of these samples. Um, so if you're interested, you can go into details um, to search our publication. So the second slide, we um, also continuing evaluating different types of um, protein meal. Um, and then we include full fat, meal, uh, full fat soy and canola seed and also other, other protein meals as well. The, um, the thing we did differently in experiment is a way, because we ran into this problem of um, convincing birds eating enough quantity for us to quantify digestibility. So we actually use the corn instead of, um, instead of um, dextrose in diet from seven to 10 in this experiment. It does confound the results a little bit because um, corn does contain protein, but that's the best solution we can so far. And then the final step, step is uh, use the single ingredient digestion rate we quantified to formulate the six diets by using uh, ingredients commonly used in Australia. And this is a calculated starch protein digestion ratio here. 
and we did see um, correlation, a quadratic, quadratic correlation between fee conversion ratio and the starch to protein digestion rate ratio um, in the final results. So the optimal ratio um, was given when the, um, when, sorry, the optimum fee conversion ratio 1.436 um, was predicted when the starch protein ratio uh, was 1.414. So we were also hoping um, to actually give an indication, say what is the range of the optimum starch to protein ratio, what it should be. Um, but this is just the one study. Um, that's why we have all these recommendations for ourselves and uh, for whoever is interested in spending more time on the same topic. So um, we would really would like, uh, um, we really need to use a larger database to understand uh, where the optimum starch and protein digestion rate ratio is for the best performance. And I think um, with the ingredient digestion rate, now we can start monitoring that if anyone would like to share uh, their performance data and their formulation or calculated starch protein digestion rate. This will help us to map out uh, where it, what, what is the optimal range we should be targeting if we do go down the formulation path. Um, and then feed intake, we found the results, we confirmed the results. Um, as I explained before, uh, in this type of study, uh, that's the um, continuing challenge for digestibility measurement um, type of study. Digestion rates between feed ingredients and diets may not be additive. The reason we say that is um, not every program can handle uh, nonlinear formulation, but um, based on what we explored in our study, um, most of the case digestion rate, one plus one does not equal two. I'm probably saying something obvious here. Um, so yeah, digestion rate um, of single ingredients and the times of their percentage of improvement um, percentage of inclusion sometimes does not equal to the final digestion rate in a complete diet. So, and then just a more, for, more thoughts, the implication of the concept of digestive dynamics. Now our group is putting lots of resources focusing on development of reduced crew protein diets. Um, we can now reduce crew protein by um, 1.5 to 2 percent without causing any trouble. Uh, we got a little bit of trouble if we go beyond that on weight-based diet. Maize-based diet is different. Um, but then uh, this is at the least one point we really need to consider in reduced crew protein diet. Um, we need to consider glucose and amino acid absorption digestive dynamics, um, because reduced crude protein diet would contain higher starch. And also, a reduced crude protein diet would contain higher um, supplemental amino acids, so non-bound amino acids and protein-bound amino acids digestive dynamics. That's very important. That, would, that will be very important as well. So we already previously proved the rapidly digestible protein um, will have the benefit for feed conversion efficiency. Um, but then again, it's different in reduced crude protein diet. We think there should be a maximum inclusion of uh, amino acids, synthetic amino acids in reduced crude protein diet before we run into problems um, of um, digestive dynamics. And then the last one is um, the other factors we haven't been able to look, look at, for example, how exogenous enzymes will in, um, influence digestion rate of starch and protein in various ingredients and complete diet. So um, last but not least, just would like to thank all the supporters. It's a big project and um, um, it's a collective effort from the team. Thank you.